So is it that far out of out of the reach of imagination in a country that has weaponized the dollar, that is choosing inflation over austerity, that has let their bond market go nuts and has lost and whitewashed its identity and culture of what we once stood for, for them to say, hey, guys, you know, you're going green and everything. And thanks for the memories. We found safety in numbers with the BRICS and the Belt Road and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Heck, it's the majority of human population. And guess what? They're not going green. Thanks for the memories. And bang, we're no longer taking dollars for oil anymore. What happens then? And it's the same argument I've been saying for three, four years, and, and I don't care if I'm redundant. What continues to happen to support this ideology, you can't make up. And, and I think people need to understand that it's like we're going down the, 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 the river and the falls are up ahead. That all at once, once moment is coming. And, and the naysayers and the dollar bulls and the, the people who, who are just, um, you know, recency biased, uh, I guess, individuals will not see this for what it is. But I will tell you, in my entire career, 34 years, I have never been more convinced that this is the ultimate fate of the United States. We're too far down the rabbit hole. So when I beg people to own precious metals, and you do too, for me, it is not about becoming wealthy. It is wealth that has outlived everything the world has ever thrown in it, everything, including world wars and hyperinflation and Great Depression and pandemics. And what we have coming this way will make all of that look pale in comparison from a monetary perspective. Today, we're diving into some urgent insights shared by Andy Schechtman about a looming black swan crisis in the US economy. Schechtman highlights the game-changing Belt and Road Initiative and the BRICS nation's increasing detachment from the US dollar. With China and Russia conducting major trades in UN convertible into gold and Saudi Arabia declaring China its most important trading partner for the next 50 years a seismic shift away from dollar dominance is underway. Sheckman points out that China is building massive infrastructure across the globe, setting the stage for a new economic order. He warns that the little by little, then all at once scenario is fast approaching, with the US potentially caught off guard. As countries move away from the dollar, the impact on the US economy could be unprecedented. What started me really down this path was first the tier one revision of gold and, and then and then second the 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 belt the, the significance of the belt road initiative and if you study much about the belt road it really dovetails like a hand in glove into belt road or into the bricks rather and you know because of the infrastructure that is being set up uh, whether you're talking about everything that we mentioned already with GDP and military might and human population and, and natural resources and all of those things. But they've also done an amazing job in infrastructure in terms of roads and bridges and maritime channels and, um, and, and, and ways of industrializing parts of the world that never were industrialized and doing it in a mutually cooperative way. And again, we talk about settlement, not in the dollar. When you talk about hundreds of trillions of dollars in settlement in other currencies, um, you know, like I said, Brazil is now, you know, China just canceled huge grain contracts with Australia and the United States, and they're buying them from Russia and paying for it in yuan, which is convertible into gold, which is what? The tier one asset. Uh, and and, China, and Brazil selling corn and soybeans to, to China, uh, you know, for, for yuan, which is convertible into gold. And 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 all of these trades where even you know China won a, a huge uh, contract with Iran to to um, uh, modernize their biggest airport they're paying for it in oil all of these things used to settle in dollars so listen to this regarding the Belt Road Initiative um, the Chinese government has just launched a new public blockchain infrastructure platform led by the Conflux Network the new platform dubbed Ultra Large Scale Blockchain Infrastructure Platform for the Belt Road Initiative. And the main focus of the project is to create a public blockchain infrastructure platform that will be able to support the implementation of cross-border cooperation projects along the Belt Road Initiative. You're talking 75% of human population, 50% of global GDP just in the Belt Road. And all of the OPEC countries, every one of them, on the Belt Road. So you put the OPEC countries on the Belt Road, you got the Belt Road, you got the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is the largest regional and financial um, and military organization on the planet. Um, 
uh, along with the BRICS and the, and the um, Eurasian Economic Union, they're all the same countries. In fact, the president of Belarus has called for a summit to bring the SCO and the Eurasian Economic Union into the BRICS. I've been saying that for years. It will happen. It's the same countries. You're talking almost 90% of human population and the majority of all the commodities. And, and now you have not only the majority of all the shipping lanes and all of these new north-south corridor and east-west, all of these corridors that 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 are, are proprietary, that will only be patrolled by military and commerce where the U.S. Navy doesn't have access to a lot of this. And now you, you have a, a, a payment system using like the Project Embridge or this new blockchain for all of these countries. 75% of human population, as is right now, to trade outside the dollar. And that's why I'm very fond of this phrase, little by little, then all at once, logarithmic decay. You know, people are always blowing off and naysaying and poo-pooing and, and ignoring the little by little because it takes so long. And not only that, our media does no job of telling us it takes so long, but then they're blown away by the all at once, how fast it happens. But if you take a step back and look at the changes we've seen in the way that, that the United States is viewed globally, in the way that, that the dollar is now lacking in settlement for so many forms of commodities globally, the way that all of these, these exchanges and infrastructures and, and you know, whether it be you know, geographic infrastructures or monetary infrastructures are being set up, that when they flip the switch, the all at once will catch the world by surprise in a massive massive way and you know like i said richard russell always said they they have to inflate or die they the fed they he said this 20 years ago i've always said we'll find a villain when you have janet yellen going around the world saying we're going to sanction you 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 and you yet we're able to do this stuff or we can invade iraq 20 years ago still occupy their country still sanction 14 of their banks destroy their country and you know bring in a new regime and yet we're still there and controlling their oil revenue where they, you know, they made 95 billion in oil revenue last year. And, and a few months ago asked for a billion dollars. We said, it's not a good time. So they're kicking coalition forces out of the country. They are making trading in dollars illegal. If you own a business and do so, you'll go to jail. And they just formally applied to the BRICS. So the world looks at us as being hypocritical as hell, but yet we can say, you can do this. We can do this, but you can't. And this is, this is all happening as they're building infrastructures and alliances. And, you know, people say, who will trust China? Who will trust Russia? Well, who the hell is going to trust the U.S. anymore? Mm -hmm. And that's where gold and a marriage, perhaps, of, of blockchain technology, like they're talking about here, where you have immutability and veracity shown of what is on the ledger and who is behind it. And you have it audited and you have a system that inspires trust um, rather than, you know, and in, in a cooperative manner, mind you. I'm not saying the Chinese or the Belt Road or the BRICS are perfect, but we, nor, nor are we any longer. And then when you look what's happened to the country, you know, I would say if it was just this, we'd be all right. But look what's happened to the United States, where you question the, the authenticity of the electoral system, of the judicial system. You have open borders where 12 million people have entered illegally, where, where you have lawlessness and homelessness in the cities to, to epidemic proportions, uh, where, where you have wokeness, where you don't respect authority, where you don't respect your teachers and your parents, and, and, and you're hired in government and in, on Wall Street, not based upon merit, but based upon you know, your gender or your sex. or you know, All of these things, people look at this country like, what the hell's happened? And then we have massive runaway inflation. We have a bond market that is, for the first time in 45 years, um, more volatile than the price of gold. All of these things coming together at once. Andrew, I, I really do believe, honest to God, we are at the, the foothills of a once-in-a-generational move. And either you see it for what it is or you don't. And I believe it's too stupid to be stupid. Are our politicians that stupid or are what they doing, is it just too stupid to be stupid? Could it really be intended? Because either you fall on the sword and default, we're sorry, our brain dead monetary and fiscal policy did this. Do you inflate the way that all politicians have done, which lead to the same end road? Or do you have option three? And that is to, to find a villain. And it was those sons of bitches, Xi Jinping and Putin and OPEC. How could they do this to us? How could they dump the dollar? Because the synthetic demand for the dollar that has been created for over 50 years, where every country in the world has had to stockpile it in order to buy oil, 
like that goes away. Yeah. You know, the United Arab Emirates just said, we don't want to take dollars for oil anymore. Iran and Russia aren't. What happens when Saudi and the rest of OPEC says, hey, you guys, listen, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia just said China's our most important trading partner this year and for the next 50. Those words were used and thought about specifically. It was 50 years ago that we signed the petro deal with Saudi Arabia. So is it that far out of, out of the reach of imagination in a country that has weaponized the dollar, that is choosing inflation over austerity, that has let their bond market go nuts and has lost and whitewashed its identity and culture of what we once stood for, for them to say, hey, guys, you know, you're going green and everything, and thanks for the memories. We found safety in numbers with the BRICS and the Belt Road and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Heck, it's the majority of human population, and guess what? They're not going green. Thanks for the memories. And bang, we're no longer taking dollars for oil anymore. What happens then? And it's the same argument I've been saying for three, four years, and, and I don't care if I'm redundant. What continues to happen to support this ideology, you can't make up. And, and I think people need to understand that it's like we're going down the, 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 the river and the falls are up ahead. That all at once, once moment is coming. And, and the naysayers and the dollar bulls and the, the people who, who are just, um, you know, recency biased, uh, I guess, individuals will not see this for what it is. But I will tell you, in my entire career, 34 years, I have never been more convinced that this is the ultimate fate of the United States. We're too far down the rabbit hole. So when I beg people to own precious metals, and you do too, for me, it is not about becoming wealthy. It is wealth that has outlived everything the world has ever thrown at it, everything, including world wars and hyperinflation and Great Depression and pandemics. And what we have coming this way will make all of that look pale in comparison from a monetary perspective. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. Let's recap the key points from Andy Sheckman's insights. The Belt and Road Initiative and BRICS nations are accelerating a move away from the US dollar, with major trades now happening in UN, convertible into gold. Sheckman highlighted how infrastructure developments by China are reshaping global trade and warned of a little by little, then all at once shift that could catch the US economy off guard. This potential seismic shift in global economics could have unprecedented impacts. If you found this discussion valuable, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share this video with others who might benefit from these insights. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave your opinions in the comments section below.